Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield, America's most popular two-way cigarette. What a pair. Chesterfield king size at the new low price. Chesterfield regular. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. It was a hard two-day ride back from Fort Wallace, where I'd gone on government business. And I was pretty saddle-weary when I reached Dodge late the second night. So I went straight to bed without seeing anybody. I'd been gone a couple of weeks, but I'd wired Chester a few days before when to expect me back. And he wasn't surprised when I walked into the office next morning. I figured you'd rode in last night sometime, Mr. Dillon, but I didn't want to bother you. Oh, bother me? Why, was there trouble last night, Chester? Well, no, sir, but everybody was sort of expecting you. Oh. Uh, where was you yesterday, anyway? I, I mean, where'd you ride from? Pawnee Creek. I camped at Rocky Bend. Oh, Rocky Bend's a good camp. I remember it. Oh, <laughs> I, I meant to tell you, Mr. Dillon, they hung up a new sign at the Texas Trail across the street there. Come on over here at the window and you can see it. Well, I'll look later, Chester. I'd like to go through my mail now. Yes, sir. Well, now who's that? What? About four men just pulled up in a wagon right out in front there. They're getting down. Hey, they're heading this way. I don't believe I know any of them. <laughs> well, let them in anyway, huh, Chester? Oh, yes, sir. Come in, gentlemen. Come in. Where's Marshal Dillon? Uh, he's just sitting right there at his desk, mister. Marshal? I'm Red Samples. Hello? These other men here work for me, except him. Huggins, come up here. This is Jim Huggins, Marshal. Huggins? Hello, Marshal. There's another man laying in the back of the wagon out there, Marshal. He's been shot. Did you say shot? That's what I said. Oh, then I'd better run upstairs and get Doc Adams. I'll be back, Mr. Dillon. Doc Adams ain't going to do him any good. No? That man's dead, Marshal. He's been dead since yesterday morning. Uh, who is he? Lou Price. Lou Price? That's right. Same man you ran out of town about a month ago. You were pretty mad at him the way I heard it. Yeah, I was. He tried to put a knife under me. Nobody saw him try. How do you know that? He told me. Lou Price was a sort of partner of mine, Marshal. Oh? Buying up cattle, Marshal, all over Kansas. Buying lots of them. They have me a big ranch when I'm through up on Pawnee Creek. Well, that's fine. You were camped on Pawnee Creek the night before last, weren't you, Marshal? Yeah, I was. At Rocky Bend. That's right. Hear that, men? Uh, I the only reason I asked Marshal was that Jim Huggins happened to see you there. Oh, is that so? I don't remember seeing him. Doesn't matter. As long as he saw you. Tell him, Huggins. It was him, all right. That's where Lou Price was shot, Marshal, at Rocky Bend. Poor Lou, he never had a chance. He wasn't even armed. Happened yesterday morning. I seen the whole thing. Huggins, tell us who killed Lou. He did. What? You did, Marshal. You're the man I saw. You shot him.
right. What's your game, Samples? I've got no game. My partner was murdered. You had a grudge against him. You just admitted before witnesses you were at Rocky Bend. Jim Huggins has identified you as the man he saw kill Lou. It's good enough evidence for any court of law. You'll hang for it, Marshal. You got it all figured, haven't you? We're going down right now and swear it out legal on paper. Then I'm going to send it to the governor. Don't you try to get away, Marshal. We'll run you down, sure. Yeah, I expect you would, Samples. Your men look like professional gunmen. Except for Huggins there. I never saw Huggins till he ran into us yesterday. I don't bear you no grudge, Marshal. I'm only trying to do what's right. Sure. Sure you are. All right, let's get going, men. The sooner I get this to the governor, the sooner we'll see justice done. Remember what I said, Marshal. Don't you try to run. What a pair. What a buy. They're talking about king-size Chesterfield at the new low price. And Chesterfield regular. They're the quality twins. Either way you like them, you get the same highest quality, the same low nicotine, the same wonderful taste and mildness, a refreshing smoke every time. Yes, the Chesterfield you smoke today is the best cigarette ever made, and it's America's most popular two-way cigarette. So buy a carton today. King-size Chesterfield at the new low price. Or Chesterfield regular. What a pair they are. They satisfy millions. They're best for you. I'll say one thing for Red Samples... He had about as good a case against me as I'd ever heard of against any man. And there was nothing I could do about it but wait and see what happened next. Meantime, he spread the word around Dodge. And people began looking at me like I was a white buffalo. I guess it wasn't often they had a U.S. Marshal walking around with a murder charge against him. But finally, one night, a couple of weeks later, something did happen. I was sitting with Kitty watching the crowd at the Texas Trail. I'll set you a drink, Matt. Uh, no thanks, Kitty. You're expecting trouble of some kind, aren't you? <laughs> Seems to me I got enough trouble already. I know. Matt, I hate to say it, but I think half the people in Dodge believe you're guilty. Yeah, uh, sure. And the other half just doesn't care one way or the other. Well, I don't think you are. Uh, don't you? Of course I don't. And why don't we talk about something else? You're edgy. Sure, I'm edgy. I stay that way to keep from falling asleep all the time. Now, don't get all riled up. I didn't mean anything. I'm sorry, Kitty. I... I guess this business is getting on my nerves after all. Well, I should think it would. Why don't you go and get good and drunk? Forget the whole thing that way. Kitty, if I ever got drunk, I could name you ten men right here in Dodge who'd cut cards for the honor of shooting me down. Mr. Dillon? Oh, hello, Miss Kitty. Evening, Chester. Sit down. Thank you. I've been down to telegraph office, Mr. Dillon. Oh, any news? Yes, sir, but you won't like it. Here it is, sir. A telegraph from Washington, D.C. Well, how do you know I won't like it? Well... You see, I was standing there when he was writing it out, and I couldn't help watching him work and all that. I don't want to read it, Chester. You tell me what it says, huh? Well, if it's from the War Department, then it says they heard from the governor, and, well, you'd better read it, Mr. Dillon. No, you're doing fine. Go ahead. Well, you're suspended. What? You're suspended from U.S. Marshal, Mr. Dillon. And to make it legal and formal like they're sending somebody to arrest you and take you up to Hayes City for trial. I don't believe it. Neither do I, Miss Kitty, but that's what it says. 
It's the only way they see how to clear this up proper. Evening, Dylan. Miss Kitty. Oh, I see Chester beat me back with the news. What? How'd you know about this, Samples? I'm just as interested in this business as you are, Chester, so I sort of talked the clerk into giving me a copy of that telegram after you'd left. Well, you got no doubt... It's on okay, that Chester. Around. It doesn't matter. Dylan, Dodge is going to breathe a lot easier now that you're suspended. He won't be around as Marshal. I'm still around, Samples. But you're not Marshal anymore. You won't be around for long anyway. Tell me something, Samples. Sure. With me out of office, are you going to be breathing easier, too? I'll tell you, Dylan. There are two reasons I'll be glad to see you hang. One is for murdering my partner. And the other? Well, I always heard you were too strict here, and I like to do a little gambling now and then. Oh? In fact, I'm thinking of running a few tables myself. I see. It's more fun without some hard-nosed lawman looking over your shoulder all the time. You understand? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Well, I'll see you at the trial. I hope I'm around when they come to arrest you, Dylan. You probably will be. So long. What's he talking about, Mr. Dillon? You're being too strict. Well, there's plenty of gambling going on in Dodge right now. Not his kind of gambling, Chester. What do you mean? Well, he told me he's buying up cattle and getting himself a big ranch. But he's probably going to finance it from his gambling. And that takes a lot of money. Sure, steady money. Oh. And I've always run crooked gamblers out of Dodge. Matt, what are you going to do? I don't know, Kitty. I'd sure like to have a talk with that witness of theirs, Jim Huggins. Well, why don't you? Well, I can't find him. I got him hit out someplace. Matt, is there something I can do? No, nothing, Kitty. Matt, thanks anyway. Well, there she comes, Mr. Dillon, right on time. Now, there are not many people at the depot this morning, are there? No, sir, but anyway, I'm glad I talked you into walking down here with me. There is just nothing pleasures me more than watching a train come in. Well, at least it doesn't cost anything. My, I'd like to drive one of them, wouldn't you, Mr. Dillon? No, they're too noisy for me, Chester. Hello, Marshal. Hello, John. Maybe if I talk to the Santa Fe people, they'd let me try it sometime, you think? Hey, wait a minute. What? Over there, just getting off. The man with the long hair. Well, I'll be... It's Wild Bill Hickok. It sure is. Hey, Bill! Hey, Bill! Hello, Matt. How are you, Bill? How are you, Chester? Fine, Mr. Hickok, just fine. Hey, that's quite a surprise. Why didn't you let me know you were coming? I didn't know myself till just before I left Abilene. Huh? Well, how is Abilene these days? Well, I'm still a sheriff there. Guess I will be till somebody gets around to shooting me. Oh, nobody's going to shoot you, Mr. Hickok. They keep trying, Chester. <laughs> they keep missing, too, don't they, Bill? Well, so far. Maybe that's just because nobody's tried to shoot me in the back yet. Yeah, you've always worried about that, haven't you? I'll tell you something, Matt. What? I don't think I'd mind so much if I was to be shot by a man like you. By me? You might take it in mind to try it. I never could tell which way he was going to jump next. Like right now. So... Wait a minute. Yeah? You, know? you came here to arrest me, didn't you? That's what I come for. Yeah, sure. They might have known they wouldn't send a tin horn. I guess they figured you might not take easy, Matt. I tried to tell them they could lose a good lawman this way. We're a pretty fair match, you and me. Yeah? Yeah, we are. Well? It's your play, Bill. 
Oh, I guess that can wait a while. Okay. I'm still on salary, man. So? Let's go have ourselves a drink. Good. You too, Chester? Thank you. I I'd be right proud to, Mr. Hickok. I figure if I get a couple of drinks in you, Matt, I might worm your side of this business out of you. Why, Bill? Don't you believe their side? Well, I've seen you pretty mean and ornery, but even if I was to watch you judged and hung for it, I still wouldn't believe Matt Dillon killed an unarmed man. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, that girl headed this way. Ain't that Kitty? Yes, sir. It sure Matt. is. Matt, I've been looking everywhere for you. Well, it's Bill Hillcock. Hello, Kitty. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. What are you doing in Dodge? Well, I... Uh, sort of come on business. Uh, you said you were looking for me, Kitty? Uh, Matt, I know where he is. Where who is? The witness they've been hiding, Jim Huggins. What? Huh? Well, where is he? Red Samples was in the Texas Trail drinking last night, and the bartender heard him tell one of his gunmen to take some food out to the loft at the O.K. stable. Uh, uh Bill. Yeah? While well, you're buying me a drink, I think I'd kind of like to buy Kitty one. Later on, back at my office, I explained the situation to Bill Hickok, and we talked it over. And then we sat around the rest of the day talking about uh, old times and people and horses and guns. And along about evening, we went up and laid out our plan to Doc Adams. As soon as it got dark, we went over to the O.K. stable and took Jim Huggins out of the loft and got him across the street and up to Doc's office before he was real sure what was happening. Yeah, put him on the couch there, gentlemen. We want him to be comfortable. What are you doing with me? Move, Huggins. Do what Doc says. That's it, it's over here. Yeah, that's fine, Huggins. Now then, you just relax. When's Chester going to get here? He'll be along, Bill. Bill, huh? Who are you? I've never seen you before. Mister, you're going to see me double before the night's out. What? Hey, never mind, Huggins. You'll find out. Now then, now you tell me. Have you ever had any heart trouble? Heart trouble? Yes. You ever have dizzy spells, faint, and have to lie down suddenly, uh, anything like that? Well, a horse kicked me in the head once. Made me awful dizzy. But I'm asking about your heart, not your brains. I don't want anybody to die here. The business is bad enough as it is. <laughs> what are you going to do with me? What's this all about? Oh, over here, Chester. I got it. I got plenty. That's good. Just put them on the table here, Chester. Ah, uh, let's... Uh, three quarts? Well, this is a man we're working on, uh, not an elephant, Chester. Well, I wanted to be sure there was enough, Doc. Open one up in Chester. There's a glass here. Yes, sir. Here you are, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. What is that? What are you doing? It's nothing but good whiskey, Huggins. And for once in your life, you're going to drink all of it you want. Maybe a little more. Here. Oh, no. I don't want to drink all that whiskey, Marshal. I couldn't hold all that. Oh, you can drink it slow, Huggins. But you're going to drink it. Now, go on. Go on. Get started. We will return for the last act of gun smoke in just a moment. They've got the taste and they've got mildest, millions all agree. They're low in nicotine and they're the highest quality. Thirty years' research went into this great cigarette. So here is all you say to get the finest smoking yet. Chester feels for me, Chester feels for me. You just say it's Chester feels for me. Remember, friends, Chesterfield is tested and approved by 30 years of scientific tobacco research. For the taste and mildness you want, next time say Chesterfield's for me. Buy a carton of king-size Chesterfield at the new low price or Chesterfield regular. What a pair they are. They're best for you.
You sure you got it all, Bill? Uh, just about, Matt. Uh, there she is. You want to read it over? Oh, you heard everything I did. Oh, very well, gentlemen. <laughs> Your friend Huggins has got one of the biggest hangovers coming up any man will have to endure. Is he still out, Doc? <laughs> it won't hurt him any, though. I sent Chester out for some coffee. Uh, I could use a little coffee myself, Doc. There'll be enough. Oh, say, wasn't it something how that Huggins talked once he got started? I told you, you get enough whiskey in the man and he'd start bragging. Well, you were sure right, Doc. Well, he's not going to feel so big and smart when he wakes up. Oh, I don't know. The man was awful drunk. He may not even remember what he said. Oh, he'll remember when we tell him we even know where he hid the money Red Samples paid him. Yeah, that's Samples. Imagine him shooting his own partner. Well, he's smart, Doc. You shoot your partner, you get his half, don't you? That's a fine way for a lawman to be talking. You mean an ex-lawman, don't you? You know, Bill, I'm just starting to get mad about all this. Come on, let's get going. Oh, Matt, you calm down the spell. We got to get Huggins to sign all I got wrote down here first. Doc, how long will it be before he'll know what he's doing? Oh, maybe, maybe five, six hours. Look, Bill, you do what you like, but I'm going after samples before he finds out his witness is missing. It don't seem quite legal till we get Huggins' signature. Maybe not, but my arrest in samples isn't going to be quite legal anyway. I'll arrest him. No, you won't, Bill. He's mine. All right, man. But I'm coming along. Okay. But just stay out of it. Matt, once you get your tail up and your stinger out, you're the hardest man to stop I ever saw. Matt, I've been thinking. Supposing we hadn't got Huggins to talk. What have you done then? You mean what I have fought you when you tried to arrest me? It's been on my mind, son. I wouldn't have fought you. Because we're a good match for each other? I'll fight any man alive if I think I'm in the right. Of course. I don't know you ever been afraid of anything. I've been afraid lots of times, Bill. And so have you. Well, maybe. I guess I've worked on the side of the law too long to go against it just because I'm the one that's caught. Well... Here's the Oliver Ganza. He'll be in here. Which one samples, man? The end of the bar, the one in the middle. The other two are his gunmen. Come on. Samples? Samples, I'm taking you to jail. Gone crazy, Dylan. You're the one that's going to jail. It's no use, Samples. Jim Huggins has confessed the whole deal. What? You killed Lou Price, and you paid Huggins to testify that I did it. You paid him five hundred dollars and promised him another five hundred after the trial. He's lying. Who's going to believe that? I believe it. And don't look at your hired help. They're not going to get you out of this. You can't throw anybody in jail, Dylan. You ain't a marshal anymore. No, that's not stopping me. It ain't legal. Wait a minute, gentlemen. It's true Matt Dillon ain't a marshal right now, but I'm making this arrest, and I'm deputizing him to help me. Who are you? Sheriff, up at Abilene. <laughs> Samples? I want them two hound dogs of yours to move a little to one side where I can keep an eye on them easier. Forgetting it's three against two. That's fair enough odds for us. Start shooting. No, Bill. There's no need for killing. I want these men alive. You ain't taking me alive, Dylan. You, nor Hickok, nor anybody else. I ain't gonna hang. Drop your gun belt, Samples. Why? We just might be lucky enough to kill you. Take Dylan first, men, and then go for Hickok. Wait, Samples! Right now! All right. What about you two? They never moved a finger, Matt. They're too scared. All right, you gunmen. Pick up samples and carry him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ain't you going to take their guns first, man? You don't hobble a horse with a busted leg, Bill. Let them keep their guns. Later, Hickok and I decided to run Jim Huggins and Sample's two gunmen out of town. And the way they took off, we figured they'd reach California before they stopped to breathe. The next day, Bill went back to Abilene and took Huggins' confession with him. And a week later, I had a wire of apology from the governor. Uh, Washington took a little longer. They just sent me my regular paycheck with the time of my suspension carefully deducted, which left me almost enough money to pay for the liquor I poured into Jim Huggins. our star, William Conrad. I'd just like to repeat what George Fenneman told you earlier. The Chesterfield you smoke today is the best cigarette ever made. I hope you'll try them. Regular or king size, I'm sure you'll find Chesterfield is best for you. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Neston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Vic Perrin, and James Nusser. Harley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Filter tip smokers, this is it. L and M filters. At last, a filter tip cigarette with much more flavor, much less nicotine. L and M's miracle tip contains alpha cellulose for effective filtration. It's the filter that counts, and L and M has the best. Yes, this is it. As Patricia Morrison puts it, L and M filters are just what the doctor ordered. Buy L and M filters. The light and mild smoke. Without your letters, your friend in the service feels out of touch, lonely, and it's tough to be lonesome. The USO knows a letter always makes a fellow feel better. Mail from you brings the warmth of home and friends to him wherever he is. So, write today. Remember, it's tough to be left out at mail call. Next week at the same time, Chesterfield will bring you another transcribed story of the Western Frontier on Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs> 